Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, and today we'll be doing an unboxing and review video for the 1-6 scale Green Reaper figure by Equa Studio. That's right, we're back with yet another unlicensed release, this time based on a certified badass from the Resident Evil universe, codename Hunk. I'll also demo a mod for the helmet that, in my opinion, could elevate the likeness a bit. Come in, Alpha. Alpha, do you read? Nighthawk, this is Hunk from Alpha Team. In the 2019 remake of Resident Evil 2, Hunk makes a return as a hidden playable character, and just like in the 1998 original, he successfully retrieves a G-Virus sample and must make a daring escape from Raccoon City as he battles the toughest hordes of enemies the game has to offer. Released in 2021, this purchase was quite the gamble for me because I've never heard of Equa Studio before, but we will unravel some of the mysteries as we dive deeper. As you can see, some assembly is required. This type of setup is actually very common, especially when it comes to military figures. So if you are used to figures that are ready to play out of the box, the assembly is something to keep in mind with this purchase. But before we put everything together, let's see what we're working with. Oh, and we're starting all the way from the bottom. Alright, hunk, let's see what you really look like. <laughs> what the heck is even going on here? This is just like that time Kakashi was trolling Naruto when he took off his mask only to reveal another one underneath. Oh, and while we're at it, this head sculpt even looks like a cheesy ninja from the 80s. Anyway, the ballistic helmet has a nice matte finish with a set of working chin straps and the bolts and ridges exactly as seen in the game. The balaclava is pretty standard, but it's long enough to cover all the way down the neck. There are also two gas mask options. The default one is nice and clean, with the scary looking red goggles, but compared to the game, the lenses should be opaque, and the yellow ring on the respirator is a little too bright. But that's just me being super nitpicky, because these missed details are not enough to hinder the presence of this figure. And for some reason, there's a strange number 2 marking on the left side, and it's secured on the head with a mesh wrapping. The other mask has a battle damaged right goggle, with some shattered pieces still stuck in the sockets. This mask is actually a reference to yet another bonus character in the RE2 remake, who is a member of Hunk's unit, codename Ghost. But in the game, Ghost's mask and helmet were damaged with visible scars, both of which are not present on this figure. And since I don't have any modding skills, I think I'll just stick to the first mask. And then we have the costume. The underlying BDU shirt and pants are actually fairly standard. They look good enough, but nothing too remarkable. The highlight for me are these shoulder patches. The way they tilt are very accurate to the game. The body armor also looks pretty good, but I'm not too crazy about the double Valkro lock in the middle. It protrudes noticeably, which could be a nuisance when we put on the tactical vest later. I'm usually not a fan of fabric boots because they tend to look mangled at times, but these look fantastic. The core piece of our setup is this tactical vest, with a hydration pouch in the back, and utility pockets all over the front that are filled with these black foam bits to hold up the shape. There's also this belt that connects the vest to many other items, which I'm gonna rapid fire for you here, starting with the butt pack and the smaller M60 ammo pouch, a triplet of pistol mag pouches, a combat knife holster, and a drop leg mask bag. All these bags have working buckles and lids with metal hooks on the back, and they're all stuffed with these foam pieces, which maintain their shapes while keeping them light. Lastly, we have the drop leg holster, which looks great with the set, but unfortunately is not game accurate, because Hunk uses a black plastic holster. Finally, we arrive at the accessories, and here's where I'll draw some comparisons to the Damn Toys Leon Kennedy figure that I reviewed before. There's a link to that video in the description, so please check it out if you haven't already. In any case, the relevance here is that the base body and certain accessories are identical between the two releases, which has led some to speculate that Equa Studio and Damn Toys are somehow related. In particular, Hunk's first aid spray, flashbang and frag grenades, flashlights, elbow and knee pads, police radio, combat knife, upgraded shotgun, and submachine gun are exactly the same as Leon's, as well as the articulation, so I'm just gonna skip over those. What is unique to Hunk's release is this MUP pistol. In addition to the usual mechanisms, the barrel is actually lifted slightly upwards when the slide is pulled back, which is an amazing detail, because almost all modern semi-automatics in real life are designed like this. We also get the Lightning Hawk, which is just the Desert Eagle here since it doesn't have the game accurate custom wood grips, but all the tiny moving parts are on point. 
There's also a strange protrusion on the radio pouch. I'm not really sure what it's for, so please let me know in the comments if you know what that's about. Alright, before putting everything together, I want to go on one more tangent about the biggest issue I have with this figure. Take a look at how the helmet sits on the head. The chin straps aren't fastened, but this is as low as the helmet can get. Note how it's not covering the top of the goggles like in the promo pics, which is also how Hunk wears his helmet in the game. So the stock head sculpt was too big for us to get this look. Now I do have a solution for this, which is actually what you've been seeing for most of this video. But I should preface this by saying that there are many ways to fix this issue, and mine certainly is not one of the best. I'm sure there are plenty of you out there who could just file down the head yourself so the helmet could sit lower. But I thought I might as well share what I did here for fellow collectors like me who don't have the tools or skill set to mod anything. So if this issue doesn't bother you at all, please feel free to skip ahead using the timestamp. So the first thing I did was picking up this head sculpt that kind of resembles Jake Gyllenhaal from his 2012 action thriller, End of Watch. It's noticeably smaller, and just to make sure it works, I did a test run using the battle damaged mask. Then came the next challenge. The neck joints on the stock body is too big for the replacement head. I tried all sorts of combinations using any spare pegs I could find, and came to the conclusion that the smaller head sculpts can only fit on a Hot Toys neck joints, which is not compatible with the stock body. So I ended up swapping out the whole body as well. On the left is the stock body. On the right is a spare body by Hot Toys that I got a long time ago. I picked this because the articulations and proportions are essentially identical. Plus the neck joint is compatible with the smaller head. I'm pretty sure this is a Hot Toys TTM14 body, which unfortunately has been long sold out. But you might be able to find similar offerings from generic brands, using keywords like Hot Toys TTM18. And by extension, I'll also have to replace wrist and ankle joints. Thankfully, all the Hot Toys pegs are compatible. I only had one set of ankle pegs to spare, and sadly they were a little bit loose. There's no display stand with this figure, so I'll be using a spare one for now. This one's on me though, because the original ankle joints were very sturdy. I'm waiting for a new set of ankle pegs by Damn Toys to come in, so hopefully those will fit better. And after painstakingly swapping out the entire body, it's time to suit up. Alright, roll the thing. That took forever, but at least the helmet is sitting exactly where it should. But real talk here, no one should have to go through this much work just to get the figure to look like its promo pics. Putting this vest together is also a lot harder than it looks. The buckles just wouldn't come together because of the extra bulge on the body armor that we saw earlier. The radio pouch was also very difficult to put on. I recommend using a pair of tweezers to shimmy down the straps. I also just noticed the vest color is a little bit off. Instead of green, the one in the game features a dark yellow color. But that's not too big a deal for me, because the whole package overall does look pretty cool. So there you have it, the 1-6 scale Grim Reaper figure by Equal Studio. As I was setting up everything, I couldn't help but wonder, to whom this figure is truly meant to appeal to. Because without context of Hunk's character, this is just a pretty standard tactical figure. But as a representation of Hunk, the likeness falls short because the helmet just doesn't sit like the way it does in the promo pics. You can also mod the figure in any way you see fit, but I'd argue that's something you shouldn't be expected to do, especially when these are high-end collectibles. And for fellow RE fans out there who want to mod this figure, I wish you the best of luck. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.